Two weeks ago, UMass got the best to Drexel in Western Massachusetts. Today, the return meeting in Philadelphia. The second of two games between these two in the regular season as the Dragons look to flip the script on the 19th ranked Minutemen in our CAA Game of the Week right here on Lack Sports Network. And with that, we welcome you alongside the former North Carolina Tar Heel, Davey Emila. I'm Travis Eldridge. Davey, the first meeting between these two, UMass dominated, never trailed in that game, going on to win 13-7. to Yeah, Travis, we are back in the studio, another Saturday game. Really excited to see this UMass team play. They can get up and down, score and transition, and you know they're going to be tough. And they were tough in that first game, but that was early. These two teams different. Some guys in that game, though, not changing. Let's start with UMass. The freshman, Dylan Arant, four goals the first time these two played, and he leads the team in goals in his first year on campus. Yeah, Dylan Arant, one of those guys who just can score from anywhere on the field. You see his range there. The freshman just continues to get better and better as his confidence grows. You know, UMass had a little slow start to the season just with everything going on, so you can see a freshman, the more reps he's getting, he's getting better and better with them. He's going to be an absolute weapon here today for UMass. On the Drexel side of things, no Reed Bowering again today, and since Bowering and so we are underway here from Vitus Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Drexel getting the opening draw, and we apologize for some of the technical difficulties, but we're underway, and the Dragons get the first possession here today. This is Jack Mulcahy coming out of the box in the midfield. Feeds in front, and the Dragons strike first. Just like that, one possession, one goal, it's one nothing. That's how you want to start if you're Drexel right there, Travis. You know, having an opportunity to play this UMass team for the second time already this season. Want to take some things from that first matchup and what you can learn. And one of those things is on offense, what's going to be their best matchup. And as we can see, Drexel is going to go after their one-on-one -on -one matchups, look to draw that slide, and then look inside for those off-ball attackmen who are constantly circling and moving. Ryan Genord with the feed, finding Aiden Cold the starting attackman. Number 13 of the year for Cole. The senior out of Connecticut had three points in the first meeting, and this is a big development for Drexel. Jimmy Coyta struggled a little bit in terms of changing his technique and style to adjust to the new rules early in the season, but now a guy who was terrific the last couple of years has adjusted and look out to the rest of the CAA. Yeah, you said it, Travis. That's one of the things that have really be, we've keyed on with the coaches' conversations, just the face-off and how different it has been this year. Different athletes adjusting to it at different times, and we can see Dressel's on top of it. Mulcahy sends that one high. Love the way Mulcahy's come out to play. He was responsible for that assist on that last first goal for Drexel, and now comes right out of the box, goes at his guy again. That's setting a tone right there. This is Mulcahy again, operating top of the box, matching up with the All-American two-way midfielder, Jeff Trainer. Yep, you, you have a game with UMass playing. You see 14 on the wings, on the face-offs. He's on defense, he's on offense. Trainer can do it all. Here's Mulcahy all the way around at Anx, and he shoots high. <laughs> I think that's about three early shots from Mulcahy. He came to play today. I like it. You wonder, maybe you see that matchup with Trainer, and, and some of this is a strategy play to just make him defend a little bit early on, a guy who obviously is an important offensive player as well. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right there, Travis. And McKay, he, just with the way he's going at Trainer, it takes energy to play that defense, especially against a short stick, and that's something that can wear on you as the game goes on. Shot clock winding down, mailman shot deflected, and here is Trainer with a ground ball. And UMass coming the other way. Their first offensive possession today. Chance to meet this offensive unit. And this is always the game with UMass. They can keep those midfielders on. They'll play two ways. So an ability to, to kind of trap on some of the offensive midfielders for Drexel. They have Colin Mailman caught on there. And so he's going to have to play some defense. Yeah, and that's exactly what UMass wants, and that's what they want to take advantage of with those two-way middies. That's something Coach Canelo really hit on with us in our conversations. Just the advantage of keeping an offensive middie who's not used to being down there and going right after him is huge for this UMass offense. Ball at X here, and Drexel's caught up. Good feed, but a stop by Ross Blumenthal. 
Yeah, nice job by Blumenthal. Just staying tall, point blank, just following the offensive player's stick. Always big for a goalie to get their first save on their first shot. Builds that confidence, sets the tone for the day. Mailman sends it across, and it's Zach Augustine, the redshirt freshman midfielder, brings it across midfield, and Casey Waller sets things up. Look at the second midfield unit on, includes Charles Tomac, seeing his first action of the season. Freshman out of New Haven, Connecticut, number 47 in that white Drexel jersey. This is Sean Donnelly, the starting attackman. Backs his way in, has his stick deflected. I like that idea there by Donnelly, just using his body to get to that island. Just needs a couple more steps to get that length right here, just like right there. <laughs> Draw the matchup with Adam Tui. Race for the backup, won by the Dragons. That was Casey Waller back there. So the possession continues, but 10 seconds left on the shot clock for Drexel. They got to hurry. Here's Janord, sends it behind. Three seconds left. A shot up and over the goal. I don't think it hit anything, so that should be a shot clock violation. Unless it did hit the goalie. Let's see. Oh, they do get the reset. There's some confusion. I don't think Drexel yeah. thought they got the reset. You can see Drexel, they're subbing their guys off. That midfield unit very quickly had to put their foot in the ground and turn back around as it seemed like that shot did hit something. You know, was just getting ready to say, did did like that offensive possession from Drexel. I like where they're attacking. They're picking and choosing their spots, getting it through X, sharing the ball. Oh, Janord was wide open on this near side wing. Instead, they went for the skip pass, and Tui comes up with the ground ball. We'll see UMass, we know they like to put tra push transition and take advantage of early offense, see if they can do that here. That they got numbers. Oh, it was a long pole chance. <laughs> Couldn't pick it up. Kept alive here. They got two long poles on the offensive end here for UMass at the moment. <laughs> Some... You can hear some coaches <laughs> suggesting that they switch that up. <laughs> this is Mike Tobin, who now they'll get the offensive personnel on. There's always a balance there, Travis. You know, we want to encourage the defenders to push transition, but there is a certain time where, hey, we got to get our offensive guys on. Looking like Scott Ratliff trying That's to stay right. on and play offense. Second offensive possession here for UMass today. Spinning and scoring is Trainer. The grad student out of Billerica, Massachusetts, ties it at one. God, I, I just really like this kid's game. Just Trainer, just so tough. What a leader. Um, just here, just simple, simple little pick action. Gets on the short stick and then uses his size, uses his strength. Just a really nice uh, roll dodge there to get his hands free and then just puts it lower and away on the goalie. Just how impressive is he to take the first face off wing, then take the first shift on defense. Now you see him and his capabilities on offense. Just a really solid player all around there, trainer. So let's see if Zach Hockman can adjust at the face off X. Drexel's Jimmy Coida has won the first two draws. Had a beat on that one, but Hockman able to push him out of the way and get the face-off win. Here comes Hockman. How about the athleticism? Hockman, he did it all. Two one-minute men. Yeah, big-time play there from Hockman. I believe that's a nice little counter move, if I'm correct. Uh, Greg Renlin might be able to say that better than I, but just nice counter, pushing the opposing man off the ball, and then the rest is history. Sees some green field there, just dodges one short stick, and gets right down the middle of the field, changes planes on the goalie, and UMass is on a little bit of a roll here. I think it was interesting in talking to Greg Canella about Hawkman. He said, look, he was already kind of more of an athlete than a face-off guy, so the new rules he yeah. felt like weren't as much of an adjustment for Hawkman as Koita goes early. And you saw the athleticism there. I right. mean, he's 6'1", 195, big body, just moves Koita out of the way, who is not a small dude, no. moves him out of the way, and then goes downhill for a goal. And I think that's also something that Coach Canella references, just that wrestler body type and that wrestler mentality. And he thinks with these rule adjustments, that's ultimately what's going to win out here. 
So another face-off win for Hockman, who has settled into this. Both teams have now won two face-offs. This is Clayton Proctor coming out of the midfield today. The senior sends it over to Grant Breo, the freshman. Skip pass, back out top. Good takeaway check. And yeah, the ground ball for the Dragons. Now we'll see on the opposite here if Drexel can push transition. They can go in a hurry. Donnelly shot wide. It's a scrum there in the corner. Won by UMass. Heck of an athletic play yeah. going in the air and backhanding that to keep it alive. And that backhand, you got to be very sure of where that ball is going, making sure it goes behind the cage and not in front. That is 101 yeah. of defense, not throwing the ball to the middle of the field in your own offensive end. Yeah, talk about avoiding a, a disaster. And I think Note may have even been out of the cage there, so worked out well for UMass. UMass settle, able to settle things down. This is Mike Tobin. He and his brother Kevin both see a lot of minutes on this offense for UMass. You know, Travis, you and I are talking about having Tucker Durkin being on the coaching Ooh. staff here for Drexel, and I think you can see a lot of his attitude and energy so far in this young Drexel defense. Sean Quinn with the ground ball. Pass deflected, but he's there to scoop it up. Quinn, a standout senior defenseman. 12 caused turnovers in, four game, er, in five games so far for Drexel this year. Guy who's been one of the key people in this Drexel defense since his freshman year. Four-year starter. Good feed. Cole stopped by the sophomore Matt Note. Yeah, nice job by Note. Just inside there, staying tall, matching sticks. Able to make that save early again in the offensive possession for Drexel. They are, they are really going after it and not afraid to shoot early into these shot clocks. This is a Dragons offense that caught fire about a week and a half ago in the win over Lafayette we saw here on LSN. Dropped 24 goals on that Leopards team in, in doing that game. I mean, every shot that was going, was being released, was finding the back of the net. It's an offense that when they're feeling it, they are scary. So I, I you get the feeling with Coach Volker, it's a balance of, okay, how do we control the tempo, but also keep that same excitement and enthusiasm on offense? Yep, you're right, and that's the challenge is finding that balance, when to push, when to settle in and play offense, when to understand when your defense uh, could be a little bit tired if the other team's getting a long possession, all those things. And having those senior players with a lot of experience can help in those situations. We know UMass has that, and, and Drexel's really looking to still figure that out with Bowering being out um, and some individuals, you know, uh, shifting into new roles. How about Jeff Trainer there? He had a beat on the <laughs> ground ball. He lost his stick, or otherwise he would have picked it up. Then he went with the over-the-head check try, and then he took the ball away, but Mailman was able to track it down. I mean, Jeff Trainer, we're going to see his name probably called in the PLL draft here coming up, and he is a, a guy that I think is going to fit that league very well. Yeah. And why not? Why not the indoor? Why not the NLL as it's well? True. Playing out I the mean, back end. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't want to face him in a in a contained area. No, I think in being able to move guys out, push guys playing defense inside out. I mean, that's what the indoor game is, and then pushing transition just like he's able to do right here. Shot deflected, and here comes Trainer. He's already got one today. Trainer feeds, low rip from Arant there, sent wide. There is the freshman we mentioned in the open, leading UMass in goals in his first year on campus. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be key to get him going. Just another little detail there from Trainer, as we see. I think he could have made that pass one or two steps earlier or taken the shot, but what he did was tuck his stick to get underneath. That drew Ron's man up towards him, just one or two steps. That's all he's needed and allowed him to get his hands free. Just a subtle difference there from a really experienced player. So Mike Tobin has settled things down for UMass. Went down 1-0 on the first possession goal by Drexel, but they responded with two goals of their own. Hockman, the face-off man, and Trainer with the two goals for the Minutemen. Now a rot. The attackman up here by the box. Had a step on his man. Hounded, though. Good physical play by the Drexel defense. And there's the ground ball pickup. 
And it's interesting, we've seen Arant sort of in a, di a lot of different locations in their offensive set. I'd like to see him a little closer, lower on GLE, and using that body, putting his shoulder down, and getting some space on these defenders. By the way, on defense, uh, player out here for Drexel as defenseman Patrick Udovic is out. Pat Kiernan, the senior out of New York, getting the start, number 23 in that white jersey. And these are the situations here for Drexel that you don't really want to get involved in. Just a, a pass that gets away as you're trying to work it around. UMass is going to be all over that. That's just going to make it tougher on your offense all day long. And those are the things that really fuel this team like UMass. Ball out of bounds on the near sideline. I'll give it to UMass. Still 10 seconds to get it over midfield for the Minutemen. Eisenstadt tries to backhand it. Ball loose. Good first time ground ball. Peter Rayhill scooping up that GB for Drexel. You know, you wonder with UMass the sort of difference in the clear when you have your two-way guys on versus when you really need those defenders to push the ball up and get it to the uh, defensive midfielders and ultimately your offense. Okay, he was really involved early in the offense here for Drexel. Let's see if he gets going again. Matched up here with Mike Tobin. Yeah, I like that they went right back to him and he's getting a run here. Gets underneath, is stopped by note. A crease violation. There was no whistle or flag on that. That was a physical play by Tobin defensively. That was. That stick was pretty high there. I think okay, he was looking for, for a flag there as he was, you know, went hard to that rack. I thought a flag was going to come out and Drexel was potentially going to have an extra man, but we see UMass able to clear. Now they're going to get a possession here as both teams start to look at the clock and really make sure they're playing these end-of-quarter scenarios right. So UMass, they have trainer and their experienced guys out there to do so. Yeah, welcome to the CAA. Toughness is yeah. not optional. <laughs> You gotta bring it every you single You gotta earn game. those flags, that right? Hundred percent true. <laughs> Cut Nella out of the box. Sent behind. Cut Nella, another guy we've seen many, many games. Trainer got back to that left hand. It's the second time we've seen Trainer really create a lot of space with that roll dodge step back move. Working from X, great nice trail shot, check yeah. to just poke it away. Otherwise, Tobin was right in for a goal. Cutnella, shifty move, it's sent wide. It was, I think, did everything right. I think his hands just got caught a little low there and then put it up above the cage. Wow. Sorry, that was Spencer working for Max. And that was a one-handed yeah. check. That was sort of a desperation check. Tobin sends it off the side of the Nets, and that's going to do it. Shot clock violation as Spencer's got to drop it. Yep, you hear the Drexel sideline mentioned into their offense, short clock. Step one here is to accurately clear the ball, get your guys on, and see what you can do here to end the quarter. Under 30 seconds to go, UMass up 2-1. to one. They, they're resetting the shot clock, but there's 21 seconds left. Maybe some confusion right. there. It can be tough. You know, if you're a clock operator, there's a lot of, well, lot of people, a lot of, a lot of opinions being flown around there. You're hearing a lot of different things. What it does do is it allows, you, it allows UMass, they do need it for the clear, but it, what it does do now is it allows UMass to drop back into their defense right. instead of Drexel having a chance with 20 seconds to maybe get one on the fly. So there's some time here, and if you're Drexel right now that the defense is set, we want to get into our offense, but also find the timing that works. You don't want to give UMass a chance to run the field and get a shot off here. So I'm thinking you're going at really nine, eight seconds to, to leave no time on the clock and get a quality shot. You, know what, you, you give yourself one good look if somebody beats their man and maybe a rebound? Yeah, exactly. Right, and, and again, no time for UMass to get anything up and down the field. You want the ball, the quarter to end down here. Tomac beats his man, step down shot, stopped by no. Is that a broken stick? It might have been. I think Trainer might have broken his stick. 
Drexel with the ground ball chance at midfield. Five seconds left. And that is how the first quarter will effin. And pretty even between these two through 15 minutes. UMass, though, scoring back-to-back -back goals after being down one to nothing. And the 19th ranked team of the country has got a lead thanks to their face-off man, Zach Hockman, putting one home. 2-1 after one. Start of the second quarter from Vitus Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Travis Eldridge, Davey Emla back with you. Our CAA Game of the Week, 19th ranked UMass with a 2-1 lead over Drexel on the road. Davey, these two teams playing earlier this season, a 13-7 win by UMass, but that's just the second game of the year for this UMass program who got off to a slow start. It was They were ready to play Army back in February, and then their campus went on a, a COVID pause because of rise in cases, and then just as that was about to end, they had some issues dealing internally with the team with COVID positive cases, and so then there was another two-week shutdown. So. It, for, for Coach Greg Canella, he's just happy at this point that they've got their team on the field and they're, they're able to play some lacrosse here this yeah, point he, in the year. He is, and I, to be honest, I didn't realize it was that extreme until really he took us through it uh, this week when we were able to, to talk to Coach Canella. But when you have that sort of delay and that, that shift in the sort of timeline, you are relying on every minute you get together to continue to develop your team and get where you need to be on a weekly basis. Doing a great job so far. I think both these teams feeling each other out in this first quarter. You know, have they played each other already? So looking for things to really open up here as the teams settle in. And, I mean, remember, this UMass program, they, they, they're still kind of finding themselves in terms of what they are going to be at the end. I asked Coach Greg Cannell, like, what do you expect this team to be? We, we know, we think we know where you are now. What do you, where are you going to get to? And he's like, I don't know, but it's no different than any other year. Right. He's no, like, that's look, always the challenge. April 1st, like, you're still trying to figure things out, even in a normal season. Right. So this is just taking that to, to another, another level as that shot was deflected. Still 20 seconds on the shot clock for Drexel. Mailman, there's the shake. But note, saw it the whole way. Matt Note making a career best 21 saves in the first meeting between these two, and he's off to a good start today. That is third, excuse me, fourth save of the day. Yeah, Note, he's seeing the ball well. He's making a couple key saves, some really on the doorstep inside there. But, you know, if I'm Drexel, I really want to focus on changing planes here, both on the inside and my outside shots. When you have a goalie who's seeing the ball well and feeling it like Note is, it's essential to make him work on um, every time you get a shot opportunity. How about Zach Note by the, or excuse me, Matt Note by the way in these these two years? He came in as a true freshman and earned the starting role last year, taking over for Sean Scanoni, who in his senior year was the goalie of the year in the country. Those are high expectations to come and step in the crease and be the next guy, and he has just kind of run with it. He has, and I know that was a big topic for us, you know, last year yeah. when we were we were going through things, but you know, note. I think that's, you know, something that these goalies, when they step on campus, it's, you know, you, I think a coach can either see that they have it or not. You know what I mean? I think Coach Canales and Notes certainly did. There's a rod, but stopped by Blumenthal. Here it is talking about Matt Notes. Yeah. Hey, don't forget about me. Yeah, nice shot by Blumenthal. Again, just staying, matching sticks. Saw that going low to low all the way and was able to get down quicker and beat that shot there to that location. Blumenthal, another guy who stepped in in his freshman year and earned the starting role. That was back in 2019. I think Drexel played four goalies in the first part of that year before they finally found Blumenthal. And Blumenthal came up with a big game in the CAA tournament against this UMass squad when Drexel upset them a couple of years ago in order to get to the CAA championship game in 2019. So that shot sent high by Janur. Yeah, Janord, I think he wants that one back. Had a little bit more room and space than he thought, a little bit more time. Um, and again, as we're saying, when we're getting those opportunities, it's essential to make these goalies work and challenge them every time. This is Donnelly working from X. Backside. Good luck. Nice Fakes shot. and scores. Charles Tomac, the first goal of his career in his first game, the freshman out of New Haven, makes it 2-2. 
Yeah, nice job there. I believe that was Donnelly on the feed as he was just driving up the left side. Tomac was able to find a soft spot in the UMass defense, just slipping behind as the defenders lose track of him. But more difficult than it looks there by Tomac handling that ball, bringing the stick up back to his ear, and then able to fake note hard, getting him in the air, and then it's just a simple berry low and away there uh, for Tomac here. Nice job by the attackman and midi hybrid. Sorry, Luke Toma, Tomac. My apologies on his first goal of his career. And a face-off win for Koida. Yeah, another violation there. I'm not sure what it was, maybe an early go, but she's starting to see those add up a little bit as the face-off matchup is going back and forth here. Each team with one violation here in the first half, just something to keep track of. This is Mulcahy. Seen good stuff out of him in this first half. The feed just a little too much to handle. Comes out to Mailman, though. Janord shoots wide. Yeah, Mulcahy, you can see they are very comfortable with him starting the offense and the ball in the stick. Another save by Note on the step down from Waller. Nice job by Waller to hustle back, though. And a chance at another possession for the Dragons. Well done. That was good hustle by the junior midfielder. Waller shoots it, he gets it safe, but did a nice job to hustle back and make a play. Now we've got a flag down. So we're gonna see this Drexel man up unit coming up as they get this free possession. Mailman. And Trav, that's something to watch for, for Matt Note as well, is he's doing a great job stopping the ball, but also he's making a lot of decisions and getting out in transition and throwing those passes to the defenseman. Obviously a lot of trust there to throw that pass, but ultimately now resulting in another chance here for Drexel. That was a long skip pass across the box to Janord. Now Donnelly behind Mulcahy. Wrapping around <laughs> off the bar. Yeah. If I'm Drexel, I'm going back to him more and more. He's getting a lot of space and separation. Yeah, they've got the short stick on him because you got to—I mean, you got to figure out who you're going to pull in the midfield. And Mulcahy is taking advantage of that matchup so far. Mm. Unnecessary roughness call on Matthew Hill. It wouldn't be a UMass Drexel game without an unnecessary roughness call. Oh, there it is. So first man up look for Drexel today. Six and 19 on the year, a little over 30%. You hear the UMass bench yelling double cuts. See the two guys crossing up top there for Drexel trying to open up the shooters. Donnelly from the top and Note read it again. Matt Note has Drexel's number so far this year. He does and he has seen the ball really well there. Donnelly did a great job of settling into that bucket and Chid changed planes. He dropped his hands this time and came back high. Note just was there for the challenge. Ball goes out another of bounds, flag. and we've got another flag down. So maybe some five-on-five five lacrosse coming up. And I think this is advantageous to UMass, just opening up the field a little more, a team that likes to get out in space and run. So there's 27 seconds left on the one-minute penalty. 30 seconds, so essentially it would match up almost perfectly. As there's the... The call, Donnelly wanted a hold, but instead it goes against him. I've seen that play too many times, Trav. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gabriel Prosek. We haven't said his name yet today. Coming off a terrific performance on Tuesday in the win over Hofstra. UMass really looking good against a good pride program on the road. Prosek with four and one in that victory. So we'll see UMass get an extra man opportunity here as their penalty expires. Arant coming out. Philpot switches hands and Blumenthal goes low. Goalie's playing really yeah. well to start this. There's the pull on Mulcahy. You know, it's interesting now, too, with Trainer, because he's he's almost like a, he's like a short stick and a half, right? Yeah. 
so he you can have your pole on you know the most dangerous offensive guy, but having him there to guard your second is is a nice luxury for UMass. Mulcahy drawing two. Trainer recovered now, but now he's on this attackman. Oh, uh, look out! Defense moving, shot high. Genord has just been a little off so yeah, far. Yeah, that's a couple we've seen sail on him a little bit. And I think, as we've said, with a hot goalie in note, important to challenge him every time. Take advantage of your hands-free opportunities because they don't come often. Mulcahy, Donnelly, no look out top. Luke Tomac. Short stick here. Genord gets him to fall down, shot wide. I say short stick here, but then it ends up being trainer. Trainer. <laughs> Six seconds left on the shot clock. Donnelly trying to go in a hurry. Pass out top. And that was not much mailman could do in that situation. So that was almost like just a send it to the corner shot. Yeah. You know, I think we got to credit both defenses and, and the goalies making saves. I think, you know, both offenses are moving quickly. They're sharing the ball. They're creating opportunities, but they're just not quality. They're either going to be missing the net or the goalie stepping up to the challenge. So that's why we have ourselves still tied up here, too. Midway point of the second quarter. Drexel scored first. UMass answered with two in a row, but the Dragons with the only goal here in the second quarter. First career Goal for Luke Tomac, the freshman. Spencer. Top of the box, Arant had four goals in the first meeting. The freshman is yet to get going today. Nice move. And it's sent high by Tobin. I think that's what UMass is looking for here. I think one or six, one of the Tobins, really just lighting a fire, especially if they have short six on them. Both those guys are quick, agile, able to win that matchup. Here's Prosik. Tobin now back behind. Man hung up for Drexel. Five seconds left to shoot. Got a hurry. And another shot clock violation, empty possession for UMass. You know, we saw that you know, solid defense there from UMass, now solid defense here from Drexel. Both teams do a really good job of getting their sticks up in passing lanes and preventing any of those from getting through uh, for those shots. I think that's something that both teams and coaches have been keying on and it shows in this game. Quinn brings it over midfield himself. And now the Dragons offense goes to work again. Drexel team coming off back-to-back -back wins. They scored 24 against Lafayette and then 19 against Robert Morris over the weekend. So this is an offense that's been feeling it, but UMass's defense, obviously, especially with the familiarity of playing Drexel already this year, they have really locked in. Yeah, they have, and I know with both coaches, we talked about pushing the pace and filling up the scoreboard. There we go. There's Jannard, his first goal of the day. Dragons back on top. Yeah, nice shot by Janord there. And I think the key thing here is, as we were just mentioning, Travis, he's had a couple opportunities, and they've been sailing on him a little bit. But key thing for that as a shooter and offensive player is just to keep that relentless movement coming. As you see there, catches that ball with his strong left hand, able to switch it to his right, and ultimately change planes by setting his feet. Just sometimes it takes a play like that to really get you going as a scorer, offensive player, and a key purse member of this offensive unit. So we'll see if that really sparks Janord here in the Drexel offense moving forward. Second assist of the day for Sean Donnelly, the transfer from Syracuse. Hockman wins it forward to himself. Again, you see the UMass polls hesitant to come off. They want some of that action. They're thinking about it. They want that action. Instead, they'll get some other offensive pieces on, including Grant Breo. Freshman out of Georgia, one of just four players in UMass history to come from the state. Skip passes it across. They're trying to play a little substitution game there. Thought about it, thought about it. I may have thrown that. 
right into a two-man game off the bench. I like that. Breo now sends it behind. And you know, Travis, the thing about really well-coached defenses is that they just aren't going to hurt themselves, right? You see that, and you know, Tucker Durkin, who we mentioned, does a great job of not having these guys overextend, just great position all the time, sticks up in passing lanes. They're having a conversation on the field. It's just really, really well done. Here's a rot, draws a lot of attention. Picked up on the ground ball, UMass, five to shoot. And that one sent wide, didn't hit anything. So with one second left, they're just, I assume they're just gonna drop this one in the corner. Yep. Another nice job by the Dragons to settle in and hold UMass in that possession. Now we've had a couple shot clocks expired last weekend, Travis. I don't know if it's us or <laughs> what we're just bringing to the table, but it's, we're seeing a lot of good defense. Hey, I saw plenty of goals yesterday okay. in that Delaware win over Fairfield. So maybe it's just me. So maybe it's just you <laughs> after, I mean, that was, at times, a bit of a rock fight between Towson and Loyola last week. Tigers getting a big win over the 12th-ranked Greyhounds. Towson and Hofstra in action this afternoon on Long Island. Another big matchup here in the CAA. You know, and I think even the difference here, Travis, is it's more credit due to the defense and the goalies because the offenses are generating good shots. It's not like it's been stagnant or really dull anywhere there. They're winning their matchups and getting opportunities. How about Tomac? I think that's on the side of the cage. This is his first game this year as a freshman, and he's come in and, and made a statement, has a goal, and has gotten some good looks. Yeah, and I think ultimately just the mindset, right? Just no hesitation. He's not afraid. He's just ready to make plays. Look out here for the Dragons. Donnelly as Drexel will take a timeout. Settle things down. Talk things over. 3-2, Dragons up one here late in the first half. Late here in the first half, Drexel with a one goal lead. This is something to keep in mind. Both of these teams playing without one of their marquee offensive players for UMass. Chris Conley has been out the last couple of games. We are not sure when he will return this season. Preseason all CAA team member uh, would have been one of the top point scorers for this UMass program over the last couple of years. And obviously, if you know Drexel and watch them play the last couple of seasons, You've known the name Reed Bowering, one of the best goal scorers in CAA history. He is also out due to injury. Another guy we hope to see at some point here in the next couple of weeks, but both guys not in there today. And it makes a difference for these offenses. It definitely does make a difference, especially when you look at these two guys and the impact that they've had on these programs and teams over the last couple of years. You know, you mentioned Connolly. He's been a staple here and has really been the, the quarterback of this yes. offense for so long. And Bowering, just his talent is through the roof. You know, high pick in these professional drafts for a reason. So anytime you're going to lose that, it's going to take an adjustment from the remainder players on the team. Yeah, and, and uh, Drexel admitted that that game against UMass the first time was their first playing without Reed Bowering, and so that was the first time Ryan Junorda was moved up to attack. Right. And so it's been adjustment for the offense. They've uh, probably really enjoyed what they've done the last couple of weeks here with the 24 and 19 goals last week that they put up, getting more of a feel for their offense without Bowering in the lineup. Right, and especially now when you're coming into a game like this with a UMass, you know, in conference, something that you know is going to be close. Those are the games you really rely on the Reed Bowerings, who are experienced. They're so skilled. They're so talented, and they have they bring to the table when you know even if UMass plays perfect defense, he still can make a play and get right. a goal. And if you lose that aspect, you have to pick it up somewhere else. And Connolly, same thing with UMass. That U Albany game that the Minutemen lost, the first game they they were playing without Conley on offense. So both teams continuing to adjust without those guys in. Yeah, and you know, UMass, we just look at this roster and the, the seniors and the leadership that they've had, so it's it's cushioned that blow a little bit, if you will, but no, Connolly just made such an impact for so long, and it's definitely different without him. By the way, another save by Matt Note. He's up to seven in this first half. Some issues for UMass in the clear, but a good ground ball by Spencer. Heads up play right there by Spencer. You know, seeing a little bit of a, an adventure going on on the clear coming up to help. And UMass will take a timeout with 2.11 to go. We've been talking a lot about that first game against between these two. Just two weeks ago up in Western Massachusetts, here's a look at what happened. UMass got off to a good start. Dylan Arant with four goals. They led wire to wire a 13-7 win as Matt Note was terrific. 21 saves. We mentioned it today. You start seeing those shots. And, I mean, he's seen it again today, different location, but against the same team, and, and they've been dialed. 
Yeah, they really have. No, just last game, unbelievable on the stage. He's he's trending that way here today. But, you know, just think about all the things that have happened all last year with teams, their seasons being cut short, and just the difference that the preseasons have had. You know, they're playing each other for the first time, so a lot still needs to be felt out. But, you know, coaching, talking to Coach Canella this week, he was saying, hey, we're, we're going into a hornet's nest, right? You yeah. know, it's the second time we're playing. They've had a chance to see us. You know, we might be feeling a little bit good about the effort that we gave last time. So it all sets up for, for you know, a tough, really – matchup out here so it's interesting how that plays with being a second matchup well and the interesting thing is is this UMass team they after after that game against Drexel they're, they're feeling good about themselves they then go to U Albany lose a really entertaining yeah. game 13 to 12 a one goal loss to the Great Danes but then they bounce back and Tuesday they played terrific 16 10 win over Hofstra tough place to go play on a Tuesday afternoon on Long Island and they were great against a good Hofstra team so now you come here on, on Saturday, and Coach Canelo's like, I don't know what we're going to get. It was a weird week because <laughs> right. you played Tuesday, had to take some days off in between. So y you see it. So it you're talking about 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old yep. kids. Yep. Trying to get the focus up to the same level every single game is always the challenge for these head coaches. And that Hofstra game you keyed on there, Travis, that told me a lot about this team and just saying, hey, it's there. Right? Their the, ceiling is up here. Exactly. The bones are there. They can get it done. Now it's just who can handle the sort of – you know, <laughs> unknown of the week the, that the weeks bring. We got to get tested. We don't know. We got to see on Friday if we're even able to travel and then play. And it's just whoever can handle that and then go execute during the game uh, is going to be be there in the end. By the way, that was a great over the head check by George Grippo and Billy Philpot affected his shot. So we're back to 25 seconds of the shot clock. Here's a run. Had a short stick on him. Little, not on the nice same page there. You might have just been a little off they on have. some of these offensive possessions. They have, and you know, as as an offense and your offensive coordinator, you know, calling a timeout, you really want to get your best there as this, the second half is coming to an end. Really give yourself a chance to to tie this game heading into that. You know, Drexel's defense met the, meeting the challenge, but ultimately it was just sort of miscommunication amongst your offense there that led to the turnover. And now Drexel's going to have an opportunity. Another loose ball. Tell you what, every clear has been contested. You, you can tell this is a conference game. By the way, a game that UMass feeling pretty good in conference at 3-0. and A game Drexel really wants. They're yeah. coming one and two. You, the last thing you want to do is get swept by somebody else in your league in two games. So you can see that hunger in this first half. See Trainer out top there clapping his hands. Like he's like hitting the floor playing basketball. I like it. He's once again on Mulcahy. Drexel Mitty gets his step, trying to feed down low for Cole. That was similar to the first goal of the day for the Dragons. And here comes UMass in transition, under 30 seconds to go in the half. Trainer. It's going to draw a flag, I thought. Oh, he is hurt. He. That does not look good. It looks like something on his left arm. You can hear that grunt. He took a shot on his way down to this end. Right there. Yeah. Oh. And that and that's Janord. That's Janord. Yeah. Uh, Gnord yeah, there. it was Janord. So caught, caught back on defense, wants to be aggressive, and then ends up drawing that, drawing that pack. A little bit of a hole, but then a slash. Trainer's going to remember that one. Yeah. And for a guy who gets back on defense, you, you don't think that he's going to remember that for the second half? Oh, he will. He looks to be okay, just one of those that at the time it yeah. just hurts. I'm, so t timeout UMass, 14 seconds left a chance to draw something up here offensively what do you what do you look at here short time but you have the man up here for the end of the half yeah short time i think what you want to do is potentially get two shots you want to dial in something quickly um whether it's a quick roll off off the crease and a quick shot there but then ultimately if you can generate two opportunities to to just have higher uh, chances there to convert that's what we're looking for for and, here and at what point like with 14 seconds left at what point do you try to go early and, and take advantage of the man up here, or at what point do you then try to hold possession and, and carry it over? Yeah, that's a good point. I think, you know, as we're getting – it's 
ultimately depends on what's going on in the game, and that's where you have to rely on your experience and your leaders on the field to really make that call. Um, ultimately, yeah, you can see Trainer there staying on. He's not coming no, off the field. He, he wants this man it's, up opportunity. Here. He doesn't. He doesn't leave the field. He plays offense. He plays defense. He plays face-off wings. I mean, he's not leaving after a slash. No, no, and that's you know that's why you want him out there, Coach Canelo. Again, your senior leadership, right? If he can generate with this offense, with this group, a high-quality opportunity, they're going to take it. But then ultimately, he's going to be the one communicating on the field to either hold it or go for it with the green light. Eight seconds to go in the half. You can see they're looking to get that quick looking inside. For something. And, and looks again, like, it's in his stick. <laughs> yeah, they're just going to let this one run out on the first half. So UMass will carry over the possession into the second half as Trainer continues to shake it off. I want to know how many miles he runs in a game. Yeah. I'd have to get a tracker. If he had a tracker on. On... Uh, on Jeff Trainer, but he and UMass have some work to do. Drexel, the only goals in that second quarter, and they have a 3-2 lead here over the number 19 team in the country. Third quarter here in a bit, but for now we send you back inside the LSN Broadcast Center for halftime. A beautiful sunny day here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the Dragons feeling good about themselves here after two. Looking for the upset over the 19th-ranked Minutemen of UMass. Drexel up 3-2 to two as we get ready to start the third quarter. Travis Eldridge, Davey Emila back with you. Let's take a look back at these first-half highlights. Davey, offensively, it was a tough go for UMass especially. They got Jeff Trainer here in an individual effort and a Zach Hockman goal off a of faceoff. Otherwise, nothing. Yeah, that's been it so far. You see Trainer there doing a really nice job with that roll dodge to get his hands free and that low-to-low -low rip there. But other than that, offensively, they have been doing a good job of generating some chances. Just the goalies here today have been meeting to, and up to the task, and, not, and just not a lot of goals have been able to go in the back of the net. On the Drexel side, they led one to nothing. Back-to-back -back goals by UMass gave the Minutemen a 2-1 lead. But two unanswered goals here for the Dragons in the second quarter, and them offensively in that second, they felt like they had a couple of things going. Ryan Janord finally getting a shot on. He had that third goal of the first half for Drexel, and that's key as we look ahead here to the third quarter. Yeah, it's really key. Getting Janord's confidence up and going is going to be a key here for Drexel this entire second half, as he is somebody that has really taken that role for Bowering in his absence, and it's going to be key for him to have a couple of points, both goals and assists in the second half for Drexel. 17 seconds on the man up, carrying over here for UMass, so no face-off. They start with a man up opportunity here in the third quarter. Extra pass, Proctor stepped down, shot, and they cash in. With a second to go on the man up, Proctor ties it at three. Really, really nice shot placement there by Proctor, and a really nice job by the entire UMass extra man unit, coming out fast, sharing the ball, whipping it around, getting your guy from range in the spot for Proctor just to let that ball go. You see off stick side hip, just a really tough shot to save, and that's exactly how UMass wanted to start this half here. Terrific ball movement, something we didn't see. A lot of clean, crisp movement on offense for UMass. And yep. it equals the first goal of the third quarter. Proctor, by the way, from nearby St. David's, Pennsylvania. Kind of a homecoming for him. Went to Radnor High School, which isn't too far on the main line outside Philadelphia as we've got an early go for Koita. Early go there, so another UMass possession. The key here is going to be to come out with that same energy, focus, and ball movement that they did on the extra man here now on their six-on-six -six offense. It's a little momentum for the Minutemen to start the second half. This is a rot. Had four goals in the first meeting with Trexel, but the freshman scoreless so far. We get the offensive midfielders on. By the way, Jeff Trainer. Still out there despite taking a nice whack at the end of the first half. <laughs> Proctor sends it behind. Here the UMass coaching staff yelling move it on this sideline. Arant. Yeah, that's a great point there, Travis. You can hear the coaches from that UMass sideline. They want to get the ball hot. They want it in and out of everyone's sticks, not dying in one individual. Tobin back to Spencer. Looking for that inside cut that Prosik is so good at, they just haven't found an opening yet today. That's part of that 
Drexel strategy of playing that tough inside-out defense. The last thing they want to do is let up anything easy on the inside. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Long range shot is sent wide. Blumenthal, you saw his reaction. He said, no, 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 I didn't touch it. No. Nope. And so they'll send it to the corner and another solid defensive six on six possession for Drexel. And you look at six on six defense for the Dragons. They've given up one goal today. Yeah. Yeah, they've been really efficient there. And if, if I'm UMass, they, you know, I'm pushing everything in transition. Yeah. You know, we just haven't had that much luck six on six. They're doing a great job, again, of not making any mistakes. They force you to play really solid offense and beat your man every time to get something done. So I'm pushing everything in transition. Tomac, first game for the freshman, and he's got a pair. Luke, second of the day. That's funny, Travis. You and I were talking about Tomac in the break there and just saying, hey, for this, this guy being a freshman, he is not hesitating one bit. He is coming out on the field with confidence, and we see that exact scenario right there. Flies out from the box, has the stick in his left hand there, able to swivel his hips, get it back in the right, and then absolutely just change planes with that high to low shot. A little bit of the, the dive celebration rollout there I like as well. Luke Tomac putting his name on the map here today. Hockman, a quick faceoff win forward for UMass. Give a lot of credit to Drexel, too, defensively in terms of preventing the Minutemen from getting early looks. You know that that was part of the scouting report. No, it definitely was, and I can imagine just the early offense and everything that was done in practice this week had to be geared towards that of just handling those scenarios. You know, you might have those two-way middies coming down. You might have those poles coming down. They might set a hard pass down, pick down for some early offense, and just the better you communicate through those and are used to seeing those scenarios, the better you handle them in-game. Mike Tobin beats his man, but picked up. Phil Pot. Again, just sticks in the passing lane by Drexel. Big hip, and that draws a flag. And that was number 40 for Drexel, Peter Rayhill. Solid looking kid. Yeah, he was, he came in and went up high on the loose ball. Yeah, you know, in those scenarios there, Travis, anytime there's sort of that scrum, those are going to be called, I think, 10 out of 10 times when yeah. you sort of, you know, target a guy and then light him up. I think the way to do that. Yeah. Non-releasable. Wow. So a one-minute extra man for UMass. Yeah. They already have one goal in this third quarter on the extra man. And there's the head contact. So this could be a big opportunity for the Minutemen who have not had a lot of success. Six on six against Drexel. Proctor has that man up goal. There's Trainer. Nobody picked him up. And Jeff Trainer just walked on in for a man up goal his second of the day. We're knotted up at four. Kind of a unique situation there overall there, Travis. I think UMass was in good position and then just mishandled that ball there, but worked out actually even better as Trainer was, you know, moving as he was looking to feed there. And I think Drexel just assumed that he was looking for feed, they were going to roll a guy off or he's going to go in front of him. First things first, got to stop the ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's rule number one for Drexel. So they're going to want that one back. But nice job by Trainer there, just pushing, 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 realizing no one's coming and turning the corner. The Dragons have been so concerned with the, those inside passes yeah. as Koita wins a man down faceoff. That is a big faceoff win for the Drexel Dragons. No, it really is. You talk about scenarios, right? When you have that penalty locked in, any time you can, you can take advantage of that and have more time on offense. And not only potentially take the lead, but really build this momentum. Yeah. It's thrown away, but it takes out at least 20 seconds of the UMass man up. So they're going to have to hurry if they want to get another possession out of this unreleasable penalty. Phil Pop brings it across with seven, and looks like they may See if just... they go early here. We're back to even strength. There you go. Tobin stepped out off the bar. Another interesting scenario there, Travis. I think not everyone was sure. Are we pushing? Are we taking advantage of this extra man? Are we setting up our, our sixes? But you could see 
Drexel was a little bit confused himself and ended up leaving Tobin open there on the backside as one defender had to split two, and then Tobin just rings the crossbar oh. here. Absolutely pokes it. Another skip pass. That one got away. Yeah. Nobody there. And over and back. So it's been a little bit for the Dragons to get an offensive set, but here they come. Mailman and Mulcahy on in the midfield. Still not sure Trainer's been off the field in the second half as he gets set here for another defensive, defensive run. He just is a machine. And this is what I think Drexel needs to go back to is Mulcahy starting their offense. That's the way they started the game. It was such a great you know, positive energy. It got the offense moving. It got everyone touching the ball. It made the UMass defense move. I think that's really their best option. Here's Mailman. He is an electric dodger when he gets a full head of steam. We have not seen that yet today from him. Here's Tomac again, draws a flag. Freshman has done a lot of good stuff. Yeah, he was. That's, that's a tough play there to put that shoulder down, take the pressure, and ultimately now have a free possession leading up to this flag. Now Mulcahy inverted to Tomac, and that one squeezes wide, but we will now get the penalty as the Dragons go man up. Gosh, you just see the attention, okay? He just get grabbed. That was three UMass defenders sliding to him because he was going so hard. One minute slash on Sam Eisenstadt. Canella not agreeing with the <laughs> call. Kind of lifted up the helmet there. Yeah, and I think any time you just get caught underneath that chin piece, yeah. they're gonna they're gonna call that. So Drexel man up. Dragons coming into today up over 30%, 0 for 1 on the man up so far. Good feed in front, and they cash in. Zach Augustine, the redshirt freshman from Avon Grove High School, gives the Dragons the lead back. You know, we've seen both units really try for that outside pass in, both from the midfielders and now from the attackmen. Now in this odd man scenario, right, you just see Drexel does a great job of putting two guys on the inside and forcing UMass to really pick how they want to defend that or just fit defending one person there. And you can see really nice job of setting the initial screen and then floating off of it with your stick flash. Nice pass and catch for a shot there by Drexel to go up here 5-4 in the third quarter. And another assist for Sean Donnelly, who now has a trio of points. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting looking at this Drexel offense. You have Donnelly sort of uh, floating into that quarterback role, or, or really driving into that quarterback role from behind X. He's able to operate from back there. And then Mulcahy, that really drive from up top here, is that midfielder who can take a short stick and generate offense. So I like the balance they have, and I think they're just going to be better and better as the season goes on. By the way, that was the second procedure call at the faceoff X for Drexel this half. So next one will be a 30-second penalty on the Dragons. So they got to be careful with Jimmy Coyd. It's still a lot of time in this half. Here's Proctor coming out of the box. Arant wanted that one earlier on the backside. Tobin stepped down, Blumenthal up to the challenge. Really nice save by Blumenthal there. A lofty pass in the clearing game, but a dragon there to save his butt. These are the turned, things he can't do. Yeah, turned right back over. Man, UMass will settle things down instead of going. Down by one. Nearing the midway point of this third quarter. See, we have nine uh, for Drexel Mailman in there on defense, offensive midfielder. If I'm UMass, I'm targeting that match up there, trying to make sure they slide early, get the defense rotating, find the open man. Though, remember with, with Mailman, he actually started his career at Drexel as a defensive yeah. midfielder, so a guy that has some experience at that end. This is Prosik. He has not been able to 
get much going. He's more of an off-ball player in, in this game. There hasn't been a lot of off-ball <laughs> opportunities as that one rings the bar again. I think it was Tobin again. I think that was Tobin again. That time, just a nice hard uh, dodge down the alley, sets his feet, and just gets a rocket off again off the crossbar. They got a timeout on the field. We'll take it as well. Trexel looking for the upset here at home. 5-4 up on UMass. A good one brewing here in Philadelphia. The Dragons with a one-goal lead over UMass here at home. Coming out of the timeout here in the third quarter. UMass keeping possession. And they, the struggles, Davey, offensively, six on six for UMass continue. They it just have not been able to crack this Dragons defense. No, they haven't, Trav. And, you know, we, we talked a lot about them potentially pushing that offense, you know, early offense, pushing in transition. But when they do get settled in that six on six, they're being very deliberate about where they're choosing to go from, a little bit slower than we anticipated. You know, I think some of their guys with, you know, looking at Tobin, they're, they're able to really break down those short sticks and win their matchups. But other than that, we haven't seen a lot of different angles and the different points of attack for this UMass offense. So interested to see what they go with here. Phil Pot. Draws the pole out of the midfield. Now up top to Tobin. Looking for the feed there in front. Tobin has to go down and collect. Kevin Tobin. Now back out top to Philpott. For UMass, it's been who can beat their guy, and there haven't been a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups won by no. the Minutemen on offense. No, there haven't, Trav. And sort of when that's happening, you see the answer is, all right, let's bring a short stick maybe to a pole and try to set some of these picks. Prosik, there he is. We were talking about him before. We haven't said his name a whole lot, but there's the junior from Coquitlam, his first goal of the day, and he knocks things up. Yeah, nice shot by Prosik there. You know, you and I, Trav, were just talking about getting him going. You know, very, very effective off ball. But if, if they're going to short stick, you know, it's essential to go after that matchup, which he does right there. And really just a simple put your shoulder down, get up to the island, and beat the slider to that inside roll. Uh, and a nice finish there by Prosik. Would like to see UMass, if they continue to be short stick, to go back to that. And this is a strategy that Drexel has used in the past against UMass, against Chris Conley in that CAA semifinal yeah. game a couple of years ago. They short sticked him because yeah. they were like, you know what? We think we have faith in our short stick to take him out of the game. And it was effective, and Drexel ended up winning that game. This is the type of strategy that gets played in conference when you know a team that well. Exactly, because that's what it does, right? It's, it's You're so used to practicing, okay, we'll have our poles on our attack, man, right. and then, you know, one midfielder is going to have that pole. Uh, but then when you just shake that up, it changes things offensively because then it's an attack man. You're like, okay, well, now I'm being short-sticked. I have to be involved every time. I'm either setting a pick or I feel that extra pressure to beat my man. And then ultimately, right, you have all those poles up on the midfielders, not letting them get their hands free from up top. Ginord up top to Cole. Now mailman from the wing. Oh, good takeaway. There's trainer again. Got a hack in there, too. Yeah. A lot of sticks swinging. Here's Janord off the ground ball. Shot clock did not reset, so 23 on the timer, and it's stolen away by <laughs> Note. Both these teams continuing to really force the issue on, on those inside passes. Uh, we've seen maybe one or two work, otherwise they're getting picked off. Yeah, the defenses have made it crowded right in front of right. the crease. UMass brings it across. Nice takeaway. This game is not for the faint of heart. No. A lot of action, too. And that's another thing about pushing transition, Travis, is when it's 50-50, it's sort of so-so. You can see, you know, the defenders who are not used to being on that end a lot sort of hesitate in their decision-making. So Mailman slows things down as they have a new shot clock. Lucky that they still <laughs> had a midfielder coming on. A little sloppy as Augustine yeah. tracks it down. Both, co both coaches here saying, hey, come on, guys. Let's settle down and play our game. Augustine matched up with Trainer. He takes him to X. Forcing him to the right, very much so. Augustine wants to get back to that left hand. Ginord. Dangerous player here on the wing. Gets the left hand free. Note another save. 
Yep, nice job there by Node again. That's what you want if you're Drexel on offense. You have your Janord, right, your, your best player right now on a short stick on the backside, lefty, lefty wing. That's your bread and butter. But, again, really nice job by the UMass defense to force him underneath, to not give him a lot of angle, and then Node just hugs the pipe. Once again, Drexel kind of locked everybody off, forcing the pull. Jackson Cummings to make a decision. He was kind of trapped, trapped again. And so UMass takes a timeout to preserve possession. They got to figure that clear out because they've been a little. Drexel's done a nice job. They're they're taking away options from these poles and they're not able to get it to the offensive guys to be able to get going quickly, a uh, offensively in transition. At the other end, UMass's Matt Note, the goalie, another eight save performance here so far. Yeah, no, he's been on fire today, just really seeing the ball. First, he starts with great principles. As you can see there, he's always in good position. He's hugging the pipes, and he matches sticks really well. If, a def if an offensive player is going to give away where they're shooting, he's going to be there before the ball gets there. I think does a really great job there. And also, we talk about Travis. is really one that sets the tone for their transition game as he's getting the ball to these defenders up and out. But, um, you know, for his size and just agility and cage, he gets low really well. Um, and as I said first, just tracking the ball really nicely here today. If you're a directional shooter essential to change planes and mix it up on him to get it past this kid i tell you what he's not as big as sean scanoni but there's a lot of there's sean lot scanoni of in, yes. in matt note like both, get some flashbacks there yeah i mean <laughs> like you if you were watching this umass team with scanoni and goal back in 2019 and then you look at 2020 there's not a lot of difference i mean both of them have been terrific ball stoppers yeah we'll see uh what team maybe scanoni latches on to in the pll but he went to major league lacrosse and and stopped and stepped right in with what is one of the best goalies in major league lacrosse in 2019 coming out of college the goalie of the year and matt note stepped in last year helped this umass team knock off number one yale and yep. has not missed a beat they lost an all-american goalie and they, they've got another guy who's in that conversation yeah they definitely do and it's not just today as we've seen right it's last week how many was it the first time they played 21, 21 saves? saves yeah so this is it's not only just you know for his youth and in you know experience as you say it's not just sort of here and there and you're looking for more consistency it's week in and week out he's giving you this performance note by the way top 12 in the country in save percentage and saves per game here's tobin stepping down he got his man to fall down You know, you notice too on the other end, Blumenthal's doing a great job in cage as well, but it's just, I, I continue to see these shots that Drexel's defense is giving up. They're just far away from the cage, they're tough, and they have confidence in their goalie to make those saves. Phil Pot, there you full go. head of steam. <laughs> Phil Pot hits jackpot, and UMass has a lead. You know, just as we're talking about Drexel's defense doing a great job of keeping UMass out and making their shots tough, no different here. It's just that Philbot does a great job of changing planes and just beating Blumenthal to a spot. I mean, again, that is from distance. That's from range. So, again, does a great job of changing planes. This one gets by Blumenthal for UMass. Now they can see a couple more drop here and try to generate these opportunities to build some momentum. That's the offense we saw out of Billy Philpott in the shortened 2020 season right. that made, I mean, he was a guy who was mostly a defensive midfielder early on, and last year he really burst out in that Yale game. Hockman a face-off win and a save by Blumenthal. Hockman won another one there. You can hear, too, right off the face-off. You're hearing a lot of early calls and, and so on and so forth. I think both sidelines are really watching that closely. UMass riding hard. Spencer thought he had a takeaway there, but a nice job by Drexel to get it over. And Mulcahy, a mailman in his first midfield unit, going back to work, now down by one for Drexel. Tomac seen a lot of time. Beats his man, Tomac. Mulcahy picks up the pull. Now Janord. Here's Donnelly. It's been a great distributor for Max so far today. Three assists. Good feed again. Cole, nice the fake and the score. Aiden Cole, second of the day. We're not in at six. Yeah, nice job there by Drexel's entire offense. And 
Joe. You could hear from the sideline they were trying to get that ball back up to Tomac to go at the short stick, but instead they get a nice two-man game down low, and both UMass defenders go with Donnelly, who's been a great feeder all day. And then with a great job is Cole swinging front side there. You know, you see a lot of times down at X will go back opposite side. Aiden Cole's able to swing forward and then trace that circle of the crease with a nice fake and finish there to give Drexel that goal and tie this game up. Aiden Cole now up to 14 goals here on the season. 20 points on the year, and there is the violation on Koida. Hockman got a high five from his short stick, Matt That's Hill. Right. They've been working on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so third violation on Drexel here this half. 32nd man up for UMass. Continues to be a fun battle at the faceoff X. Hockman, 8 of 14. Koida's won six. But the violation's coming back to haunt him here in the third quarter. And with Hockman, I'm getting more and more of the feeling anytime he was winning that forward, he's going to the net. He, he's going to give it a shot. <laughs> he's going to the net, that's right. He's got one. So man up for UMass again. Started the quarter with a man up goal. A swing back here. Actually have two of them in this quarter, but try to force it in there. Nice job by Jack Farrell, the LSM, to navigate and a chance to kill off the rest of the penalty for Drexel. Got to get it over. They do. Close. <laughs> a couple of seconds to spare. And it, it seemed like last couple of possessions here for Drexel, they figured some things out offensively, a little bit more controlled in what they've wanted to do. You know, I think they're they're almost learning in real time yeah. what Tomac is bringing to the table, right? Obviously, freshman, it's its first game, and, and, you know, obviously what you do in-game shows a lot, but having that additional weapon has opened up a lot of things for this Drexel offense. You know, we've seen Mulcahy here being able to dodge that shorty and, be, and win his matchup. Going the other way. I'm not sure if they call it the crease on Mulcahy or somewhere off ball, but... That's a big turnover. This Drexel has been dialed here in the possession, but the ride. Donnelly not able to track it down in time. Eisenstadt, five seconds to get it over. They finally do. You know, Trav, we talk about this every week now. You know, we got a tie game heading into the fourth quarter. It's those clears, it's those little plays, those 50-50 ground balls that are ultimately going to be the difference as we see very little to separating these two teams. I mean, very little separates the most CAA teams in any given year, but here in 2021, get locked in. I mean, every game is a battle in this league. And today is no different. Here's Mike Tobin. It's just, it seems to be the way these CA teams play each other, right? Yep. We saw, we were just talking Loyola and Towson last week. Just Towson made it the game they wanted to play against Loyola there and ultimately got that done. Nice job getting a stick in the passing lane. That's Farrell. Got a couple seconds here to push. Here comes Quinn, three seconds to go. Did we get a timeout? No, offsides. Oh, that's a killer. <laughs> three seconds to go in the quarter. Sean Quinn had it lined up. But we are knotted up at six. 15 minutes to go. The Dragons try to knock off the number 19 team in the country. 15 minutes to decide this one. Fourth quarter up next here on LSN. Start of the fourth quarter, we are all knotted up at six apiece. This game has been back and forth. Lee changes galore as the 19th ranked Minutemen are knotted up with Drexel here in Philadelphia. Travis Eldridge, Davey Emla back with you. Your CAA game of the week on LAC Sports Network. Koida able to win that faceoff. Great ground ball by Luke Hurley. Dragons have a chance Ooh. and it's sent wide by the short stick D-Mitty. Great ground ball by Hurley there. That would have been a nice way to start the fourth quarter for Drexel, but to have an offensive possession here, backing that up. We'll see what they get into here with this first midfield line. We're talking about it there in the third quarter. It seemed like Drexel started to get a good feel of what they've been able to do against this UMass defense in the third. This is Mulcahy, gets all the way in, one-handed! Jack Mulcahy, are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's see that one again. 
with the flag down. Mulcahy says, who cares? Jeez, does a great job splitting to get him free and then just continues on being held. Jeez. Are you kidding? Jeez. The backhand one-handed. That doesn't make sense, Travis. Sports Center top 10, here we come. I'm trying to feel where that stick needed to be in your hand and the wrist action needed to flip that thing over, and I can't quite quite get there here in, in studio, Trav, but that, jeez, that is quite impressive. I think just, you know, a show of strength, too, from Mulcahy and creativity, obviously, for that highlight real goal, but, jeez, that is something else there. By the way, it wipes off the flag. I think he'll take, I'll the, take it. The, the top <laughs> ten goal coming. That was ridiculous. I think on just on all the levels, too, of not only to get that shot off, taking the hit, avoiding the crease. I mean, that was unreal. Hockman wins the faceoff, so UMass gets a possession, and we can all catch our breath now as Drexel is <laughs> taking a one-goal lead. I mean, Jack Mulcahy is not a guy that – He's not Dehogan Anacook who every game you, you come in, you think, oh, we're going to get something right. special out of him. That was just, that may be one of the best goals of his career. Absolutely. And I think another thing, Travis, there is I've, he's been beating his man. I've wanted him to continue to drive towards that cage and, and take those shots. And that was just Finally doing that did. to an extreme. <laughs> he did, yeah. Let's see how UMass answers. Tobin has it taken away. Oof. Oh, great place, right time is... His brother, Kevin, helping out Mike. I think key play to remember there. That could have been a swing. Trying to force it in crease. there. He got a crease violation off ball. You can see the Tucker Durkin influence in this defense. Yes, you absolutely can. Durkin in his second year as an assistant for the Dragons. I, and I keep going back to the idea of they're just not going to hurt themselves. They're not going to give anything away. They're going to make you earn everything. They're not going to overcommit. Sticks are always in the passing lane. And then when they're checking you, you're going to feel it no matter what. Yeah, we were talking to Coach Brian Volker before the Lafayette game about Durkin as we've got a flag down. So an extra possession here for Drexel on the run. Stop by note. But in talking to him about Dirk and he's like look I mean yeah he's a great player and the players know that and obviously that helps but he's a guy who was a head coach of a collegiate program yeah. before this so bringing him onto the staff he also is, is a terrific teacher of the game and that's even more important than what he is as a player still right no it absolutely is and I think that's that's you know the challenge and you know something I've personally experienced of taking your experience and, and life and what you've learned as a player and then being able to communicate that you know to all these different younger guys that are growing up and looking to be that same sort of individual. You see the coaching staff for the Dragons, and that was just kind of an unlucky play for Mike Tobin because you had Mulcahy who kind of slid down, which brought his head level down, yeah. and that's where the yep. the check comes. That's what Coach Canella, I'm assuming, is discussing with our officials today. And then, you know, Trav, continuing on with the Drexel staff, you have Stephen Boyle there, the, yep. uh, ex-Hopkins, yeah, ex-Attackman. And he, he's been at a bunch of different college programs as well. So it was just a wealth of knowledge and experience on that staff. So a man up here for Drexel. One minute up by one here in the fourth quarter. This is a big extra man for both teams. It's Donnelly, top to Janur. I think they want to come back this way with the crease roll off. Trying to find Augustine there on three, that three. far side. There's Cole. Good look. Great look, and that's a tough shot there from Cole. As someone who's been on the inside an extra man's many times, a lot of times you have more time than you think, and you just get that off as quick as you can. Backside look. Oh, there it is. What a feed by Donnelly. Squeezes it to Augustine for his second. Both Augustine and Donnelly are showing me a lot here today. Donnelly as a feeder, I did not realize he had this type of vision and ability, really from X, also from up top there. Uh, but then just the finishing ability we're, here, we're seeing here from on the backside, it, it's really impressive. And I think it was a low pass, was able to handle and get back up on feed. Yep, low to low, nice finish. Donnelly was a terrific recruit coming out of high school, played his high school ball at IMG Academy. Went to Syracuse for a year, 
Obviously, that attack unit is loaded at Syracuse. They just brought in Owen Hiltz here, so he transfers, comes here to Drexel, but was ranked the 36th incoming attackman freshman in the country yeah. last year, so a really good piece for the Dragons to add this season. And we're starting to see Drexel here now. Another possession. They're feeling themselves a little bit. Things are opening up, right? If you're UMass, it's got to be about limiting them with mistakes and not allowing more extra man opportunities, fail clears, things like that. You know, understanding two goals isn't that much, right? But we are in the fourth quarter here, and the, the way that this game has gone, it's tough to score six on six. Yeah. Big defensive possession here for the Minutemen. Drexel, its largest lead of the day at two, at eight to six. It's Mulcahy. Oh, great job jumping the passing lane. That was Matt Cadigan, the short stick D midi, causing the turnover. Yeah, a little flat-footed there by the Drexel offense. UMass takes advantage and jumps that. See if they go early. Shot. Low to high rip, and they'll keep possession. Those shots too, UMass especially, if it's you know Ron who's looking for that goal, gotta be, gotta be on net. Make that goalie work, take advantage of your opportunities as we're getting towards 10 minutes here in the fourth. You don't know how many left there are. Mike Tobin, Kevin Tobin, both in in the midfield. Mike's got the short stick matchup. Now sends it behind. Good movement, Ooh. nice save by Blumenthal. Important ground ball on the sideline. Big hit. UMass gets it back. Tobin in trouble. His brother bails him out. And a flag down. Unsettled situation for the Minutemen. So we're going to have a man up coming for UMass. Good catch there, yeah, guys. Sick. Pro sick. He has a goal on that move already. Extra pass, looking for Tobin in front. Still loose, Prosik. Low to low on the rebound. And he makes it a one goal game. And that's what that's what Prosik does really well. He just he gets to his spots and is very opportunistic. I know that was uh, a, a missed pass and the ball trickled to him, but he knows what to do. Boom, see that quick hand action, just ball in his stick, quick rick action, uh, and, and that's just really what he does. So I'm not necessarily saying, you know, off ball, but just those unique situations, and it's really, really valuable to have a guy like that. We see that a lot with Ty Kurtz and Mike Robinson, who yes, are both yes. box players now for Delaware, and, exactly. and Pro Six the equivalent here for UMass. Right. Unsettled situations, unscripted. Cool. Don't you know whatever I need? I I don't need much space or time to get a shot off. Right, and even if it was a you know an errant pass, whatever, the ball just finds a stick and yeah. it's boom. You know, back of the net, we're good to go. So the penalty not wiped off. This is a man up face off for UMass. They win it. So an extra man opportunity after the goal. This could be a big two goal swing for the Minutemen. Brent McVicker called for the cross check. So he's in the box. And the extra man unit on for UMass. This is Clayton Proctor. Joined by trainer Prosik. Tobin sends it behind. UMass really likes working on that GLE here on their extra mans. This is a rot. He's got that kind of range. Difficult pass. <laughs> Tough to get that Man. ball through. Nice handle by Trainer. Arant couldn't get on top of that. Been a tough game for Dylan Arant, the freshman. Came in leading UMass in goals. Has been held scoreless so far. Penalties released. We're back to even strength. And Trainer will settle things down. But only 15 seconds left on the shot clock. And that's more credit to the Drexel D. Travis just being in Arant's arms and hands all day. Phil Pot, oh, wow. he squeezes it by. We're knotted up at eight apiece. 
Billy Philpot always seems to pop up in the most critical situations, Doesn't whether he? it's defensively or offensively, or this team just needs a big play. Really impressive dodge here, taking the long stick, hard with their uh, the, the right-handed sweep, able to put his foot in the ground, get back to that top side righty, and just trickle that ball in there uh, past Blumenthal so to tie this game up. Blumenthal, another one of those experienced veterans, senior leader guys uh, that Coach Canella has talked so highly about to us this week. Blumenthal just got the inside part of his leg and deflected in. Unlucky for the Drexel goalie. But Philpot ties it up at eight apiece, nearing eight minutes to go. Dragons get an important face-off win, and now the offense a chance to answer. And these are games where you know both teams are going to look back future down the road in the season and, and say, hey, this was a tough battle and this is what we did in the fourth quarter to really separate ourselves. This is an opportunity for both teams to really grow here. The offenses have figured some things out here in the fourth quarter. One-handed pass. Cole tracks it down. He's hounded by UMass defenders. Yeah, they're all over him. Deflected. Still loose. Big ground ball. And Drexel gets the timeout. That's a heads up play because yep. they were going to lose that. They may have lost that possession. As Coach Volker keeps the possession here. 33 seconds on the shot clock. Knotted up at eight apiece. We saw the one squeeze by Blumenthal, but otherwise he's been pretty good. Five saves so far. The save percentage won't tell you, but defensively as a whole, this unit ha has put themselves in a position to win this game. Yeah, they have. And I think, you know, we see the, the couple saves here by Blumenthal that are really impressive there, just being able to get down, track that ball by getting low. But you just mentioned it, Travis, the way this defense is able to play lanes and play inside out and in such good position, it sets Blumenthal up to be able to put shooters in places that he likes, where he's confident, he knows that from this position, I can track this ball. My defense is putting me in a position to be successful here. And again, that's a big Tucker Durkin influence there and just the ability and what he brings to the table, not only just position and everything we're talking about now, but the physicality and energy that this group fit, uh, brings. It all encompasses and, and, and brings together on the defensive end, goalie and unit combined. Drexel obviously was not successful in the first game between these two, but Blumenthal was pretty good in that first game against UMass. 13 saves, 13 goals against in the loss. Native of Baltimore, Maryland, from the Friends School. From your neck of the woods. That's uh, as close as you can get to my alma mater, Gilman. <laughs> the campuses are, are line in line next to each other. So let's see what UMass has drawn up coming out of the timeout. They found, they've started to find something here, UMass. Obviously some of it's been on the man up, but they've they started to find some success in some of the settled six-on-six -six situations. Sorry, it's Drexel ball. And the Dragons have two. I mean, both these teams' possessions have equaled goals in the fourth quarter, which was not the right. case the first three. Right. Yeah, we're seeing that more. And, you know, Drexel, they got off to that early two-goal lead, and now UMass has fought back. A lot of test of mental toughness here for this offensive unit to stay the course, keep playing by their principles try to take this lead back. We've seen Mulcahy be really important and Donnelly in throughout this game. Those two have been kind of the party starters. Donnelly, Woo! oh, what a shot! <laughs> the near impossible angle! Oh, I love it. I love that. <laughs> wow, really, really nice and heads up move there by Sean Donnelly. You can see they're going back and forth a little bit and then realize he has a short stick, gives him a little bit of space. Look at oh. that angle! What a replay. <laughs> what an angle to see that, too. But I love I love the mindset of it, right? When you're on a short stick, you could even see the UMass defender, long pole there, ready to slide, understanding that this is a dangerous attackman. So in Donnelly, instead of squaring up and taking any more extra steps, he knows he has his hands free. Hey, I don't mind this angle. I'm just going to pull this and absolutely poke the top right corner. Tell you what, the players came to play in this one. Donnelly now up to five points, his first goal to go along with four assists. And another big face-off scrum. This one won by UMass, Jake Dulak. <laughs> I have a feeling, Trav, this one's going to come down to the end here. Just the back and forth that we're seeing. No team is going away. I, I know that for a fact. This game has been played throughout with no more than a two-goal margin. Yeah. For most of it, we've been, we've been tighter within one. 
This is Mike Tobin who brings this man way up by midfield. Between Mulcahy and Donnelly, we've seen some, some highlight real goals there. Prosik. Stick on the passing lane. And let's see if they, they will say that that ball was deflected, yep. so it stays with UMass. Yeah, there it is. It's another nice defensive play. Yeah. Because Prosik was free. He was walking yeah. on in there if he wanted to. Oh, man. Prosik, Tobin, he missed it. Just saw him a second late there, Tobin. He was locked in shooting position there, ready to catch and shoot. He's got that stick right up by the ear. <laughs> he is. It's solid fundamentals. Under 30 seconds in the shot clock here as we tick under six minutes to go. Prosik has nice it taken away. Another good play by a short stick. That was Grippo. Arat trying to get this one back. The shot clock reset. We got a loose ball push, and we're going to Dragon's way. Big stop by the, the, the Drexel D there, and big opportunity for the offense. First, they got to clear this ball, but chance to go up two under five is big, especially in a game like this. Give it to Mulcahy. Just a goal and an assist for Jack Mulcahy, but he's been a really key part of the offense so far. He has been. He set the tone from his first shift, the way he fired out from the box and, and went right at his defender. And just that that movement that it forces the defense to do is, you know, it's not going to show up on the stats and on the scoreboard, but it is very, very valuable. Augustine matched up with Mike Tobin. Now back to Donnelly. The feed in front. Another great Look there from Sean Donnelly, and the Dragons are up a pair. Aiden Cole, hat trick. Another guy, Aiden Cole, learning about how crafty and his ability off ball here as we see Donnelly, another really nice feed from him. And you just mentioned, uh, Travis, teams starting to feel it. That's the Drexel offense, as we've seen. That's a look that they've been looking for all game long. Uh, Donnelly, his ability to sit back there and quarterback this offense. Cole, elite off ball player and cutter. And now we can see Drexel, a couple of these goals have dropped, and they're getting some six-on-six -six effectiveness here in the fourth quarter. Now six assists for Sean Donnelly. He's got wow. seven points. One and six. That's a heck of a stat line. That's a big day. But a big face-off won by Hockman. He got a pull still on here for UMass. He wants it. This is where. <laughs> now he's going to come off. Huge possession for the Minutemen under five. Billy Philpot, a couple of goals in this second half, including the one that tied things up at eight. Got the defense moving here. Skip pass, Arant stepping down, Blumenthal the stop. That was the look they wanted. Arant's got that kind of range, he just couldn't get it past Blumenthal. Good feed, Mulcahy in transition. Oh. Just off on the pass. That's one that they're gonna look at in film, Travis. I don't know the answer there in terms of, do we see the time in the clock and, if, and take that out? Or if it's wide open, do we keep the pressure on? I like being aggressive. We got a timeout. Here for UMass to keep possession as Prosik was double teamed here on the near sideline. So the Minutemen keep possession now with under four minutes to go, down by two. Chance to remind you that you should stay locked in here to LSN all day because coming up 3 p.m. Eastern time, some women's action for our CAA Game of the Week. Elon making the trip to William & Mary, 3 o'clock Eastern time right here on LAC Sports Network. Also got some D3 action later on tonight as Lynchburg coming in ranked third in the country. They take on Washington and Lee after the generals of Washington and Lee knocked off Lynchburg yesterday in at Washington and Lee. So the series now shifts to Lynchburg for the end of the back-to-back -back game. So a big opportunity for the for the Hornets. As in this one, Jeff Trainer, we continue to say his name. I, I don't think he's left the field here in the <laughs> second half, Davey. I mean, he does everything for this team. See if they can 
See if they can get him involved here down the stretch. I, and I think you're right. It's, it's funny because I was actually looking. I was saying there's going to be a point in this fourth quarter where 14 will not come off the field for the remainder of the game. It's probably this segment that we're going in here right now, whether it's uh, checking in on defense, running that transition, playing extra man. And it's interesting, too, even for their extra man unit. He quarterbacks it, but from X. He's not even in that top center unit, but rightfully so. Uh, 14 is able to do it all. We see now on the defensive end, over the head, takeaway check, that ability as well. So, you know, we talk about at, at the jump of the start here, the NLL capabilities coming out the back end, and I think we're seeing that justified here today. Yeah, he's a guy that Paul Carcaterra has tapped as a, a good-looking two-way midfielder for the Premier Lacrosse League. David, you mentioned NLL. I mean, if he wants to p keep playing lacrosse, there are going to be places for him to keep playing lacrosse following his fifth year here on campus. It just is. It just with roster oh, spots. Trips. Flag down. So we'll get an extra man shot here. Yep. But just, yeah, Travis, in the professional game, both, you know, the PLL and indoor, there's, there's so few teams and there's so few roster spots that coaches are always trying to maximize yeah. the, those individuals. So anytime you can fill one spot with the capability of three, and that's what trainer has, they're going to take that every time. So it's Jack Farrell going to the box, 32nd man up for UMass. Just got a stick caught down yeah. low there. You hear the Drexel defensive coaches yelling sticks and lanes. They've been doing a good job of that all day. By the way, I think uh, I think Trainer wanted to keep playing from the ground at that point. He was like, yeah, I can pick this up. Right. Let's go. <laughs> Free possession coming up. What are we talking about? Big man up for UMass. Proctor. Again. Now sent behind. This is Trainer looking for the skip pass. Oh, just over Pro Six head. And that's, that's a play they love. They've nailed it before. That's their go-to bread and butter. Just pass just a little bit high on the backside as Trainer gets upfield. His eyes draw the defense away, and, just, and Prozik sits on the backside for that touch-in. That was the look. Yeah, it was. So we're back to even strength as Drexel tries to clear. Long pass. Dulak providing some pressure. Going to have to send it here if you're Drexel. And that's in a failure to advance. Oh, they might get a d delay a game here, too. UMass is calling for the calling flag. For Mailman just sent that afterward, and Canella is beside himself. The mask fell off. That's when you know coaches in 2021 are upset. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> The argument is so strong when it's one where, you know, I, I get it for UMass as well. You could say that it was in motion and he was trying to get that ball and send it. Either way, they get the ball back here for a chance to, to get within one. Nice job providing some pressure there. Skip pass out top here to Aran. Quickly gets a pull on him. Aran, Blumenthal again. A couple of saves here for Blumenthal in the fourth have been huge. You know, UMass, they, they clearly want the ball in a round stick, and that's why you know we we highlighted him at the beginning. Just you got to give credit to this Drexel defense of just not letting him have any space and any hands free to get a shot off. Another great ride by UMass. Oh, what a check by Janord. Donnelly. Donnelly. Wow. That might seal it. Who Terrific better? Terrific hustle from the Dragons, and Donnelly's got eight points today. Man, how about Ryan Janord? That tells me a lot about Ryan Janord. You know, he obviously has that goal today, but not, not filling up the stat books like he's used to, but just gets it done there on the ride, and then that ball trickles right to none other than Sean Donnelly, who's just, as we've seen, set the tone for this Drexel offense all day long. Somehow quietly six assists. Yeah, and right? is setting the whole, the whole uh, he's been involved in almost every single offensive play here for Drexel, uh, rightfully so. Why? We talked about him coming out of high school and ultimately finding himself here uh, on, the, for, on Drexel, and I know, you know, coach has got to be happy to have him here. A hundred percent. He was a guy that Coach Volker said that was on their radar coming out of high school, but then they found out he was committed to Syracuse, so obviously they moved on. Right. And then when he was in the transfer portal, they they, they looked him up and they, they knew exactly what his game was like, and it has been a, a good match so far. UMass trying to That's respond. Big. That's a big save. Shot clock resets, but only a minute 33 to go. 
Yeah, Trav, no time to waste here now. It's got to be all out here for UMass on offense. Doorstep. Nice handle. The minute man get one, it was Tobin to Tobin. So we see, I think the Tobin brothers will hop off here. Trainer's going to get right back here to the faceoff wing and try to do that here, run it back to get this gap closer. But nice job playing fast, just finds... Uh, inside there. Actually, really great handle, too. Drexel actually yeah. got a check on that stick. Tobin does a great job uh, handling that. Mike Tobin handling that on his way to the ground and getting it past uh, Blumenthal. Kevin setting up his younger brother, Mike. Huge face-off. Drexel a beat on the ground ball. Koida picks it up finally. Do they want a timeout? They want it. There you go. Set across. Dragons can run this clock out, and there's the empty netter. Genord calling ball game. I like that by Genord. Sometimes the teams will see the goalie out and they won't go forward and try to eat some more time off the clock, but he does not waste one second, just says, hey, if they're gonna take the goalie out, I'm gonna ice this, and that's exactly what happens. Just speaks, I think, to Drexel, their mental toughness overall. You know, I think talking to Coach Volker this week, um, he's like, you know, we're, we're still looking to improve every week. We're still figuring ourselves out. Obviously, Bowering, a huge piece of their offense, is, is still not there, and they're relying on other guys. And, you know, Gennard was the guy that we highlighted, but Donnelly really is another one who stepped up immensely here today, and I think it's only going to build that confidence in Drexel's entire team throughout the rest of this year. Hockman's shot is saved. Talk about the faceoff man wanting to be involved in the offense. Has <laughs> a goal. Nearly put another one home. Tobin. Another deflection. Go in a hurry. Drexel up ahead. And now they can hold this and close it out if they want. Donnelly's going to get double teamed. Might have a triple team coming. <laughs> Everybody on the UMass defense around Donnelly is, there's a whistle. <laughs> yeah, this is UMass ball. As we're under 20 seconds to go, what a win this would be for the Dragons as UMass isn't done yet, Tobin again. No, sorry, Spencer. There's threes in the ones on the UMass jerseys. Look very, very similar. Yes, they do. Far. Sort of some hectic flurries here to, to finish off this ball game. A lot to still be learned here. I think if you're Drexel, you know, you, you don't want to let these sort of last, these, these goals go in. You want to finish out the clock, um, you know, offensively there with Sean Donnelly. I know he got triple teamed, but. You know, always still things to be worked on as UMass here is going to uh, continue to push the pace. Coida went early, which is another face-off violation, uh. which means we got a 30-second man up here for, for UMass. So I guess if they get one really quick, they'll have a chance for another one. <laughs> this last minute feels like a basketball game final minute. A couple fouls. Strategic timeouts here and there, action. you know. <laughs> so they're going to want to get this, yep, as you said, Chad, as quick as quick. possible here and get a shot off. Run that, whatever their best play is, boom, right back to him, shot. Pro six, just high. Six seconds left. And <laughs> Drexel wants the clock to run. Right. Six seconds away from a gigantic top 20 win. They get it across. That goal counts. There's three <laughs> seconds left. It's not over yet, folks. Prosik with his third. Somehow UMass has made this really interesting. And uh, if they come back to tie this, Ryan Genord is going to regret the empty netter. Yes, yes, exactly. That's why I made the, the comment. I didn't think we, we would get to this point, but hey, here we are. Three goal game with under a minute to go, right. usually. Everything that hasn't been happening in all game just happened. That ball just got through four Drexel defenders to skip, and now and here Ackman we go. And Ackman already has a goal today. Yeah, he went early. Jumped the gun. And that should finally do it. Drexel 
the upset complete here at home. They split the season series with UMass. 12 to 11, your final. What a game for the Dragons, and what a game for Sean Donnelly, the redshirt freshman from Bradenton, Florida, leading the way with eight points, two goals, six assists, and Drexel is in the mix here, back to 500 in conference play. Yeah, really nice game here all the way through from Drexel. I think anytime you're coming into a situation where you're playing a team for the second time, the ability to take things from that first matchup, apply into here, play your game, um, is really what's going to make the difference. And I thought Drexel, right, they're trying to figure some things out offensively, their leadership, who's who's going to step up. And we saw a lot of those questions answered here today, playing a full, full game here. I know they want to clean up some things towards the end, allowing some of those extra games in. But I think a really proud moment and a team-building win here for Drexel. Tell you what, the preseason poll, UMass was picked number one, but the only team other than UMass to get a first place vote was Drexel. They were picked to finish third in the conference. Well, they just knocked off the team that was picked to finish first, and they've got a top 20 win now to their resume. Four and two overall on the year. Terrific one here from Philadelphia. Once again, your final score, Drexel 12. UMass 11, they knock off the 19th ranked team of the country. Thank you for watching this CAA Game of the Week here on Lack Sports Network. For Davey Emla, our producer Dylan Hand, and our entire crew, I'm Travis Eldridge. Coming up here on LSN, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, CAA women's action as William & Mary plays Elon, then at 73 action as Washington & Lee plays third-ranked Lynch.